Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to England once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that I bought in my recent order from the House of Trembling Madness down in New York. Uh, it's an awesome beer shop if you can get there physically. I was there a couple of years ago and from what I gather, it's only gotten better over the last few years. They've got a great web shop there as well and it's very, very good value according to the English beer tubers. So, you know, if you want some good English beers, that is definitely one of the places Places I would recommend that you check out. For this review though we are going to head down to Tottenham in North London and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a couple of times before but this was way back in the early days that I reviewed those beers. So for this one we are going to return to Pressure Drop Brewing who have been getting a lot of hype in recent times and we're going to have a look at the Alligator Tugboat today. So this one comes in at 7.2% ABV. It's a New England hazy style IPA from what I gather and I have heard that this is a very very good beer. So this is a brewery as I say that I'd heard a lot of good stuff about recently and it was one of the ones that I just wanted to try when I was back home in Scotland this time so I literally went into House of Trembling Madness picked one of the beers from uh, from Pressure Drop Brewing. I liked the name of this one and I thought the artwork was quite funny so that was the main reason behind choosing this one. They had quite a few different beers listed on there from them but uh, this is just the one that caught my eye and as I've told you in other videos you know when it comes down to it if I know the brewery or it's a new brewery to me and I've not had something in a while or I want to try something then I will just pick one where I like the artwork or I like the name of it and that was certainly the case here. But yeah very very cool to return to these guys after such a long time. The other two beers that I had from these from this brewery were apparently Stokey Brown and also the uh, Fryman's Dunkelweiss and those reviews were done you know late 2013 early 2014 according to my uh, my notes that I have in my notes file actually so yeah about time we return to these guys and as I've told you in previous reviews we know that the London craft beer scene uh, really is thriving these days I would guess that if you want to see more reviews on this brewery your best bets are probably Jake Overton at Jake Beer, and uh, also my good friend Craig Samuels from, uh, from Kent Beer Reviews so do make sure you check out their reviews I will try to remember to put the links to their channels in the video description below. But like I say, excited to return to these guys after quite some time, especially considering the hype that this brewery are getting. So hopefully it's a nice beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So let's see how we get on. As always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Pressure Drop Brewing before and hopefully I can add more to that list in the fairly near future. I don't intend to leave it, what, about six years, seven years until the next one. So yeah, we will see about getting more beers from these guys at some point in the, in the future, fingers crossed. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system. So you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am at home in the motherland of Scotland for a little while and we are getting a fairly regular um a regular feed, if you like, of English beers through Sistembolaga in Sweden, and long may that continue, because the English beers are very good at the moment, as I've told you, but as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Pressure Drop Brewery. So Pressure Drop Brewery were founded back in 2012 by Ben Freeman, Graham O'Brien, and Sam Smith. So Graham and Sam apparently have known each other since school and apparently they met Ben during his time working at London Fields Brewery who have had quite a few people go through their ranks at. So there's quite a lot of well-known people in the brewing industry down in London who have at some points worked for um, for London Fields Brewery. They were one of the first breweries from London that I tried, if I remember rightly. Um, but apparently they home brewed together on a 50 litre brew kit in Graham Shed and this was mainly during the Olympic summer of 2012, but they moved into a railway arch in Bohemia Place in Hackney a little bit later on in the year. At this stage they were brewing on a five barrel kit and they gradually expanded this place over the next few years with new fermentation vessels and uh, they expanded the brewery kit up a little bit as well. Um, but with various issues arising from their equipment and apparently the pace of their brewing slowing down all the time, they decided that it was time they had to look for a better premises and so they began scouting out new locations in 2015. They eventually settled on a site in Tottenham Hale which now they have a 10 year lease on 
and they began brewing there back in 2017. But these days they operate a 20 barrel brew kit and they've been gradually building up their fermentation capacity. They're apparently right across the road from Beaver Town Brewery and they've got an on-site tap room now and as of January of 2021 they've produced around 120 different kinds of beer. There's quite an array of different styles in there from what I've seen when I've had a look through it but it's their IPAs that have been getting a lot of praise recently but from my uh, from memory Pressure Drop Brewing were always one who did a whole host of, uh, of different things. They've gradually built up their staff over the years as well and they have got a tap room at the brewery as well which uh, opens regularly. So maybe this is a brewery that Craig and I, or J Craig, Jake and I maybe, can go and visit when I do make it down to London, fingers crossed, at some point this, uh, this year. This would be a brewery that I would really love. To, uh, to check out actually so that would be very cool but um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Pressure Drop Brewery for the moment these guys have um, they haven't moved around too much they've been working away and just releasing lots and lots of different beers which is great but it's within the last kind of 18 months or so from what I gather that um, they've really started to get a lot of hype so it's nice to finally be able to review one of their newer beers for you here again on the channel but um, yeah I think this will be this will be pretty awesome this one but if you want to learn more about these guys you you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one. So yeah, to tell you a little bit about the beer, um, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork first off and as I say I really liked the artwork on this one, I like the gold tooth on it. I do have one uh, gold tooth in the back of my mouth here which is quite funny that was actually because my original dentist messed up uh, a root treatment that I had when I was uh, when I was younger so the whole the tooth just broke away so I ended up with a gold tooth which was quite funny it was a choice of pay what 300 pounds for a, a kind of porcelain cro uh, white one or get a gold one for free on the NHS so it was yeah, it wasn't too hard a decision there but um, yeah I like the um, I like how the artwork comes across in this one. The artwork apparently is by a, a London uh, artist, a street artist called uh, Sweet Tooth, hence why it's got the gold tooth on it. But it tells you a little bit about what the alligator tugboat actually is here. So it says that the alligator tugboat is a type of amphibious steam-powered logging boat invented in 1878 in the town of Simcoe, Ontario. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. But this one, from what I gather, is hopped exclusively with Simcoe hops. But um, yeah, really quite nicely presented there. You can see the pressure drop brewing symbol on this one, which has been the same since those early beers that I reviewed for you. Those were in 330 milliliter bottles. I'm sure I got those from Odd Bins in Aberdeen, actually. But um, a beautifully presented beer, this one. And hopefully this is the first of many beers that we can review here on the channel again from Pressure Drop Brewing. So, um, yeah, pretty cool, actually. So 440 milliliter can. I think I paid like £6 or something for this one. Maybe a little bit less, I'm honestly not sure, but uh, hopped 100% with uh, Simcoe hops from America. And Simcoe is, you know, roughly about 11-12% alpha acid from memory. Lovely big passion fruit. You know, if you put it into a New England IPA uh, like this one, then it's uh, it's going to give you some lovely soft kind of passion fruit. You know, it's a little bit more oily if you put it in a West Coast, a more kind of caramelly oriented malt base. And in a black IPA, it gives you some lovely red fruity characters as well. And um, Simcoe is one of these hops that really... Um, can show a lot of different properties depending on its environment. But um, yeah, certainly looks the part of this beer, it looks very, very cool. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. The Alligator Tugboat, 7.2% IPA. Just very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So yeah, this will hopefully be very nice. My friend Adam at Mersey Beers told me that uh, he had this beer quite, uh, quite a few years ago. I think when it was originally brewed, I think this is a rebrew, um, and he said it was really damn good actually. So yeah, I think this one should be pretty cool. I just again, I rinsed out this glass and and washed it with bubbles and everything like that, and it's got things sticking to the side again. Seems I'm not able to win with this, guys. Definitely not. But um, yeah. Certainly, <laughs> it looks pretty nice. Um, so, as you can see with this beer when we've poured it out, it's a lovely bright yellow hazy IPA, this one. It's kind of what you would expect. I always like comparing these New England IPAs to uh, different fruit juices, and I would compare this one to a mango juice for sure, a lovely kind of bright yellow colour. If we shine the light through this one, 
definitely lovely and bright and yellow. There's not really an ambery hint to this one or anything, but one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. And the head, incidentally, was only a very kind of thin um, foamy layer, actually. It's perfect white. It's faded away to just be a very kind of thin, wispy layer at the moment, and there is just a little bit of a ring around the edge of the glass there. But yeah, it's got a fair level of haze to it, this one. Remember, uh, when it comes to the haze in these New England IPAs, it's dependent mainly on the um, the wheat and the oat content. Theoretically speaking, as you go up the alcohol scale, you'll get more oats and wheat, so the haziness should go up, but that's not always the case. Um, I've had Russian uh, triple IPAs that are like 10-11% that are not all that hazy but this one isn't the soupiest and gloopiest of New England IPAs you're going to come across in terms of appearance but it certainly does look nice. Lovely bright yellow colour as I said and the colour of course is dependent on one the type of malts that you use and two the length of the boil. It doesn't tell you exactly what malts they've used in this one but uh, maybe we can guess a little bit from uh, from the actual flavour. But yeah, if I stick my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a decent level of haze to this one, but not as crazy as some of the ones that I've come across at 7.2%, but doesn't matter. It's more about the flavour of the beer, to be honest. So yeah, let's take a little look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. I always enjoy a good Simcoe, IP Simcoe IPA, so I do have high hopes for this one. Fingers crossed it's a good beer. Yeah, um, straight away, if you know the Simcoe hop, um, it's got everything that you would expect. Um, yeah, this one, um, first impression of the beer, we'll start from the malty side as we usually do. This one has a lovely soft kind of white bready character coming out of it straight away. Um, so yeah, you can feel that almost like hedgehog, sort of hedgehog roll. I don't know if tiger bread's probably not right, but it's got a lovely soft kind of fresh white bready quality to it. You can smell that straight away. Um, if you take the aroma in, a little bit more deeply. You can get a little bit of wheat out of this one, but not a lot to be honest with you. It doesn't have so much of that big wheaty bitiness to it, which I think is um, is is pretty nice. But um, yeah, I do like a little bit of wheaty bitiness, but this one really is more of a kind of smooth, um, a more smooth IPA. I think this one leans towards the oats, to be quite honest with you. It's got a nice kind of oaty smoothness to it. Um, it's got a little bit of a it's definitely got a little bit of a soft white bread, you know. This one is definitely leaning towards that oaty end of the spectrum and the, the kind of barley malt things. The wheat is there and you can detect it, but I've got a feeling that it might come out a little bit more in the flavour because if you take that aroma in quite deeply, you can uh, just get a little bit of the bitiness there at the back of the nose. But yeah, soft whitey bread forming the base of this one, some smooth oats in there and a little bit of wheaty bitiness just uh, in at the, the back of the nose too. But um, yeah, lovely smelling beer this one. I really like how the, the malty side of this one goes together. There's maybe a little touch of a word that's originally tight note in the in the middle of the nose there, but not too much. As I've said to you in previous reviews, sometimes with these New England hazy IPAs, you will just get a little bit of that almost kind of butter candy uh, type note out of them. But this one strikes me as more bready and, uh, and oaty leaning. So yeah, really looking forward to... Um, to how that beer, uh, how that beer, turns out in the malty side of things. On the hoppy side of things, um, if you know Simcoe, it is as you would expect. So um, yeah, I mean, on the green side of the beer, you've got a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity there. Simcoe can actually give you a hell of a spice if you use it as an early addition hop. Remember, when it comes to brewing beers, if you add the hops early on during the boil they will give you more of a kind of bitter quality. But as you go through the boil, you've got a trade off between bitterness in favour of flavour and aroma profile and uh, yeah the Simcoe at 11 yeah 11 12 percent alpha acid if I'm remembering rightly and um, it can give you a hell of a spice in this actually and you're seeing a little bit of that in this one I think for sure um so yeah the um yeah, you've got a lovely kind of, the, the green component of the beer for me in this one, it has a wee touch of earthiness to it but mainly it's leaning towards that big kind of floral aromatic side of things and there is a little bit of kind of spicy character in there from the Simcoe as well which is quite nice. A little bit of a softer kind of grassy uh, aroma coming out of this one too but um, yeah the the aroma profile of this beer I think um, is is really uh, is, is really quite nice. A little bit of grassiness to say but the green component just gives you a little bit of spiciness but quite a nice deep um, aromatic floral aromaticity so 
it works um, It works for me really nicely. It shows off the Simcoe hop very, very well. And I think to get the best out of Simcoe in a New England IPA, it would make sense that the malt base is kind of more bready and more oaty leaning. Remember, you can get yeasty ones, you can get rye orientated ones, wheat, um, oats and barley malt. There's usually about five or so different directions you can take a New England IPA, but I've got a good feeling about this from the aroma. The fruits, again, are as you would expect from the Simcoe hop. It's got a lovely, you know, it's got a lovely kind of slightly more pungent passion fruit to it, then, you know, as your nose adjusts to the beer, I think it gradually gets softer and softer. You might be forgiven for thinking, you know, there's a few sort of kind of apricotty and papaya type notes to this one. It definitely has a little bit of a softer kind of tropical fruit character to it as well, as uh, it's got a smooth passion fruit and a more pungent passion fruit in there, but it's got a few, you know, um, lighter tropical fruits as well, apricots, papayas, maybe even a wee tiny, tiny little bit of, um, of pineapple or something like that. Simcoe's got a lovely, um, just soft tropical character to it when you put it in these New England IPAs. But um, yeah, lovely smelling beer this one. Not surprising to be honest based on uh, on my kind of knowledge of this hop if you like, but I think this one is going to be pretty good. So take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma as I always say, but we're going to taste this beer now. So this one is the Alligator Tugboat 7.2% New England Hazy Type IPA from Pressure Drop Brewing in Tottenham in North London. Definitely cool to get back to these guys again after about seven years. Too long. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's another damn good, <laughs> another damn good IPA. Um, you know, the English guys really have some some great stuff down there these days. And um, if this is what the other IPAs from Pressure Drop are like, I can see why um, why they were telling me that this is a brewery I should check out. This is damn damn solid. Um, you know, there's a lot of really, there's a lot of really good breweries in England. The, the London brewing scene has been very good for quite a long time. You know, Kernel, Brew by Numbers, these guys, um, and various other ones that aren't coming into my head at the moment. I've had some great beers from London over the years, but it's quite it's quite interesting how these guys. Um, it's maybe just to do with the volume or whatever, but um, it's quite interesting how these guys have really kind of been on the hype train just for a, a short period um, in in recent times, whereas they've been around for fairly long compared to some other breweries that have that have come a little bit later and been on the hype train for a while. I'm, I wonder exactly why that is, if there's been a new brewer come in or, or something like this. But if this is what the beers from Pressure Drop at the moment are like, have a go at these guys if you, uh, if you get the chance. This is pretty impressive actually. The other thing it could be of course is just you know, volume of uh, what they were producing, because I understand that they'd been fairly small in production for a little while, but it's like Overtone, Overtone in Glasgow, they've been doing some great IPAs recently, and uh, they're, they're really getting a lot of hype just now, I think it's mainly because their beers have gone down into England that um, more and more people are talking about them, but you know, they've been well known in Scotland for quite a wee while, um, but yeah, this is, this is a lovely, lovely beer for me. Um, yeah, let's try and just break down the flavour of this one then and see how we get on. There's nothing surprising about this beer, to be quite honest with you, but it's just really well crafted and when there's so many New England hazy IPAs on the market these days, you can't ask for much more than that, to be honest. So yeah, um, straight away with this beer then, um, my I was right when what I said on the malt base. This is a more kind of barley malt and oaty leaning um, IPA to be honest with you. Straight away across the middle of your palate, in the middle third of your tongue, you get that soft white bready note in there from what is probably pale malt to be honest with you. Um, so you can feel that there and as you go towards the back um, the back third of your palate, you can feel that it just thickens up a wee bit. There is a little bit of, of a wheaty presence there. You do get a little bit of wheaty bitiness on the back of your palate. I think the yeast is playing a little bit of a role in here as well. This beer is actually, um, it is actually quite balanced in its in its malt base. I thought it was from the aroma it came across as being, you know, very barley malt and oaty oriented. But it's actually a lot more balanced in the malt base. It has quite a few different components to it compared to what um, what it gives the impression of. But um, it's uh, the malt base is solid uh, for me. Like I say, in that 
Um, on that border between the kind of middle third and back third of your tongue, you can feel that the thickness in the beard just drops away. You've got a little bit of kind of crispness in there, and I would wonder if there is maybe a little touch of uh, a Pilsner malt in here. Um, quite a few breweries actually like to put pardon me, some sort of uh, lager or pilsner malt in these kind of beers just to give them a little bit of Christmas and there's something about this beer that's telling me that's maybe what's ha that's maybe what's happened here. I know that a couple of the, the Swedish breweries that I would normally drink quite regularly um, do this, or um, they were doing it. The, the IPAs in, in Sweden and Scandinavia are getting a little bit thicker, um, little sort of thicker and sweeter these days, to be honest with you. But um, maybe about two years ago, they were putting Pilsner malt in these to kind of crispen them up. And I get the impression that that's uh, what this one is doing. It does have a wee bit of crispness that comes out. Um, the further into the aftertaste that you go. But like I say, back third of your palate is slightly thicker and wheaty. There's a bit of a yeasty component in there as well. But as you reach that border between middle third and back third of your palate, definitely a wee bit of a kind of almost pilsnery malty kind of crispness in there. But then you can feel the thickness drops away. You get that soft um, and almost quite crisp white bready base to the beer, pale malt I think, and then as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate, there's a wee bit of oatiness there. And I think the oats do become a little bit more kind of prominent in the flavour the further you go into the aftertaste with this beer. I'm not really getting the kind of Werther's original sort of butter candy type thing that I was getting in the aroma. There was just a little touch of that though in fairness so sometimes you can pick up uh, little things like that in the aroma but it um, doesn't come out so much in the flavour in this one to be honest. But um, yeah the malt base in this one for me is quite crisp and the beer comes across as really drinkable. For a 7.2 percenter, um, this one is very, very drinkable actually. Um, it almost does remind me of some of these Russian IPAs that I've had in recent times from, you know, Zagovor, Stam, AF, White Labs and things like that. This beer really has a high level of kind of crispness and drinkability for me. So, um, yeah, I like that about it for sure. Um, maybe a bit dangerous. It'd be interesting to try like one of the double or triple IPAs from these guys and see how um, how it compares. But yeah, nice light crisp mouthfeel, but we'll talk about that later. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you do have a nice little touch of earthiness in there, but not a lot. As you move further forward, this beer very, very quickly becomes really aromatic. There's almost just a little touch of spiciness on the kind of front corners of the palate there and then around the very front curve of the tongue the beer gets a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy as well um, but yeah the green component for me really is quite floral and aromatic it's not spicy it really kind of it really just sort of um, resonates there I hesitate to call it resinous because I always think I always associate resin with you know like pine resin I always kind of think that but this beer for me isn't piney it's just it's really big and deep and floral in that sense. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of a lighter kind of grassy quality in there and the grassiness does have a wee touch of zestiness to it in fairness as well. Um, yeah, there is just a wee touch of zestiness to this beer but the grass, the grassy notes really become just nice and smooth and light the more that you um, that you drink of this beer, but um, you know the, the green component of this beer, I think, suits it really nicely. It just it gives what is otherwise quite a smooth beer and quite light and crispy, or just a little bit more kind of bitterness actually, and it, it sort of builds a good bridge between that kind of almost pilsnery malt crispness and the malt base, actually, the the, the slightly more. Um, the slightly more kind of aromatic quality that's in there. There's just a, as I say, a wee touch of spice on the front corners of the palate and the zestiness of the, the grass that comes out later gives you a wee touch of that as well. But on the front third of your palate as I always say that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. If you go towards the back of that front third of your palate you get the slightly more pungent passion fruity notes but it really softens up as you go further and further forward on it and you can feel that it gradually becomes a little bit more kind of mango like and then you start to get on the very front of your palate you get a few of these apricotty light uh, you know apricotty type flavors i would say yeah passion fruit and apricot out of this one it's a really straight shooting beer this one in that sense and um, but you know if it's a single hop beer it, it's kind of going to be actually this beer really reminds me a lot of for example, the the amazing haze from um, from Stigberget's over in uh, in Sweden in Gothenburg, um, except that one obviously uses mosaic. But this beer really strikes me as being quite similar to that, or the uh, the Narangi 
from old brewing. It's got this very straight up bready type uh, New England malt base to it. And as I said, in Scandinavia, a lot of the IPAs are kind of getting sweeter and things like that. So this one is maybe like a sort of 2017 type. Uh, 2017 roughly IPA. It does have a wee bit more crispness than those two beers that I mentioned actually but um, it's a lovely lovely beer this one and if this one is anything to go by um, as a base um, for uh, as a basis for the other IPAs that these guys do I can see why they're uh, why pressure drop are quite highly regarded at the moment and I hope that I can somehow get a hold of uh, some of their other beers so thumbs up to them solid solid beer once again um, from these guys. I, was, I remember being impressed with the brown ale and the the um, the the Dunkel vice that I had from these guys before, so cool to try something completely different. I'll need to keep an eye on these guys and see what they're producing um, for the next when I'm home in February and September. But uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, I think that sums up the the flavour profile of this beer quite nicely, to be honest with you. Um, on the the mouthfeel, then. Um, This beer, um, I would say that this one, it's mid-bodied, it's right in the middle of the spectrum. Um, for me, the carbonation has a wee bit of crispness to it, which is nice. That gives the beer, the beer a, a stronger element of drinkability, which is great. Um, it's got quite a, you know, it's got a fairly wet mouth. But I do wonder again if I've have had my fridge just a little bit um, cold there, because this beer, obviously, it might thicken up just a wee bit if it's uh, a little bit warmer. But I think I'm, I've got a good temperature. I think I'm drinking at about, you know, 8 degrees or so, which is... Is you know what you want for a, a beer like this, but um, yeah, it's it's absolutely solid for me. The malt, the, the mouth feel, um, mid-bodied, smooth car, uh, you know, smooth carbonation gives the beer a wee bit of crispness, and overall the beer is is very kind of wet and, and drinkable in that sense. It's got a smoothness to it, but it's also got a wetness to it, which is great. Uh, but in terms of hoppy bitterness, what would we say about this beer? It's not madly bitter. This one. Yeah, you know, this is a sort of 25, 2025 20, IBU beer, something like that. Um, 30 at the absolute most. It's kind of typical for your New England IPAs. The malt base for me, like I said, is quite, you know, smooth and it's got a good bit of crispness to it as well. Then you've got some nice juicy uh, fruits coming out of the beer too. So, yeah, I really like how, um, I really like how this one goes together in that sense as well. But, um, yeah, it's a solid, solid beer. In, uh, in my mind this one, it's got a really nice crisp drinkability to it, so yeah, one of the more drinkable 7.2 percenters I've come across in the last little while, but we've had a lot of it of New England IPAs, but uh, yeah, this is very impressive and it's a very good um, reintroduction, should we say, to pressure drop brewing, so I think we can round off the review there, solid, solid beer, and I look forward to getting uh, more beers from these guys whenever I can, so um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one, this one was the Alligator Tugboat, 7.2% uh, New England Hazy IPA, I think single hop Citra, I don't think there's another bittering hop in this one to be honest with you, but this one comes to you from Pressure Drop Brewing in Tottenham Hale in North London, solid beer this one and I can see why my English beer tubing colleagues um, seem to think of this brewery very very highly. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews, until the next time please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below, let me know what your favourite beers are from Pressure Drop Brewing, we will return to these guys at some point fairly soon. Uh, and I will try, I will make sure that's happening, there's no way there's going to be seven years between the reviews again, but this was an awesome, awesome beer, so do check out these guys, uh, do check these guys out. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below, let me know what your favourite beers are from this brewery, and we will get back to them soon. But yeah, the Alligator Tugboat, 7.2%, Simcoe New England Hazy IPA from Pressure Drop Brewing in Tottenham Hale in the north of London. Thank you again for watching. Check out uh, my good friends Craig at Kent Beer Reviews, uh, Jake, at, uh, oh, at Jake, Jake at Jake O'Beer, and then uh, Harry at Blue Nose, I'm sure I've reviewed a few of these, along with um, along with maybe Beardy Brett, maybe he's reviewed a few of them as well. So check out these guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next review. Slanger, Skull, cheers.